Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Bo Leng. And I'm Harminder Singh. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Three arrested after barge collision that forced Lantau link closure and travel chaos. Government says little it can do about forced shopping if people agree to join zero-fee tours. Huge hurricane weakens after plowing through parts of Mexico. Three men have been arrested on criminal damage charges after a vessel struck Cap Shoimun Bridge last night. The collision paralyzed the main route to and from the airport for two hours, leading to accusations of a huge planning oversight. Karen Young reports. Part of the Cap Shoimun Bridge was still closed this morning, as Highways Department staff inspected the damage from last night's collision. The bridge was hit by a barge at about 7.40 p.m., triggering an alarm. Road and rail access to Lantau Island was cut off for two hours for emergency checks. This led to serious traffic chaos, as the bridge is the only route to the airport or from the island to the rest of the city. It was the first time all transport links were suspended since the bridge opened in 1997. Over 90 flights were delayed from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m., according to the airport authority. Some desperate travelers even got on ferries to Discovery Bay and Silvermine Bay to try to catch their planes. Authorities say the vessels involved were a tugboat and a barge it was pulling, and statements have been taken from crew members. Reports say the barge exceeded the height limit for passing under the bridge. The police and marine department are investigating. This morning, Chief Executive Lan Chen Yang held an emergency meeting with heads of the various departments involved at Government House. After the meeting, Lang defended closing the bridge for safety reasons. He also announced a series of follow-up measures and said an alternate route to Lantau will soon be opened. There's an alternative route that will be in about three years, and this is the Cuman Chara Cock link, which is going to be the longest um, undersea tunnel uh, in Hong Kong. It will provide an important link uh, and definitely an, an alternative route. Uh, to and from the airport if uh, something similar to the incident last night uh, occurs again after the completion of this, uh, uh, this link in about uh, uh, three years. Meanwhile, engineer and chairman of the professional commons Albert Lai blamed the airport's remote location for the chaos. For when we decided to put the new airport on uh, Lantau Island, we know that uh, we have to face the risk uh, for a single passage. So if this bridge uh, is closed off, like what happened yesterday, then obviously there will be a big uh, constraint uh, on traffic. Uh, and hence, this is a planning to, uh, trap in itself. And the trap is not because of any planning error, but it is because of the geographic constraint of Lantau Island itself. But Lai said he doubts a new tunnel will help and foresees more problems when the third runway opens. He insisted it was a wake-up call for the government to review its overall planning for Lantau. Karen Yai, ATV News. The government says it has limited control over forced shopping tours if people agree to the terms of the package. The Travel Industry Council admits it cannot monitor industry members from outside Hong Kong. Vicky Wan reports. Days after 54-year-old tourist Miao chong Chi died after being beaten up outside a jewelry shop in Hong Kong, preliminary autopsy results show he had a heart attack. But it is still unclear if the heart attack was caused by the assaults after he tried to break up an argument between two women. There is speculation Miao joined a so-called zero-fee or low-price tour, which may include shadow tourists, who persuade or force the others to shop. But speaking after a radio program this morning, Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Secretary Raymond Tan said there's little the government can do if tourists agree to the terms of the tour they join. It is a market behavior that if, uh, there, uh, if the customers, so-called customers, are um, uh, agreeing to the terms of the tour, um, there is nothing much that uh, the, the government uh, can do under the law because it's a market behavior. Uh, but to the extent that uh, behavior is within the bounds of the law, um, um, uh, there is still something that the society, I think, would have to discuss, whether uh, such uh, market behavior would nevertheless uh, tarnish the uh, international image of Hong Kong. Tam said the government will look at the existing liaison mechanism with mainland authorities to enhance cooperation and communication. 
The Travel Industry Council's chairman, Michael Wu, insisted in another radio show that the council has clear rules and guidelines for travel agents and customers covering compulsory shopping. But he admitted there is room for improvement, as the tourism body cannot monitor travel agents or groups from outside Hong Kong. Police have arrested a 42-year-old woman surnamed Lam, who they believe is connected with Tema International Travel, the agency that is said to have been looking after the mainland tour group. The company is also suspected of using forged documents. Days ago, it submitted files to the council claiming a Shenzhen travel agency was responsible for organizing the tour. But authorities in Shenzhen say the agency there did not send any tour groups to Hong Kong. Michael Wu said if the company lied or broke any rules, the tourism body may consider taking away its membership. Vicky Wen, ADV News. Raymond Tam also said the government will not relaunch political reform talks in the current term of the chief executive. That's following reports that British Prime Minister David Cameron shot, sought assurances from President Xi Jinping that Hong Kong can elect its own leader without screening from Beijing. Tam said he doesn't know whether the two leaders discuss the issue, as there is no mention of it in official press releases. He said any constitutional development should be in line with the basic law and decisions made by the central government. The hospital authority says it will review the pay adjustment mechanism for doctors at public hospitals. Officials insist a 3% pay rise for doctors will not affect public health services. Corinne Young reports. A 3% pay rise for the more than 3,000 public hospital doctors will cost about $200 million, according to hospital authority chief executive Lam pak -in. Although the pay rise will not cause any financial problems for the authority, Lang said a review is needed before a permanent system is put in place. So we need to discuss about long term whether the pay level survey, we're going to, uh, the government pay level survey, we're going to follow or whether we have our own pay level survey. So we need to resolve it. Of course, you're know, not going to wait until the, the next one, you're going to the next six years later. But probably in coming year or so, we can actually uh, find out the way. Lang also dismissed concerns that the pay rise will eat into resources reserved for patients. The authorities' decision to approve a 3% pay rise for the doctors at public hospitals came after more than 1,000 of them staged a sit-in protest at Queen Elizabeth Hospital on Wednesday. Asked if the pay dispute has damaged staff morale, Lang said no, saying the protest was a platform for doctors to show their concern and care for the public health care system. Lang also said it's time to discuss whether public hospitals should charge more for their services. He insisted it was not a ploy to boost the authorities' revenue, but might encourage wealthier people to choose private health care instead, easing the burden on public hospitals. At the same time, some say it may also increase the burden on the not-so-wealthy. Karen Yang, ATV News. Overseas. Powerful Hurricane Patricia has been lowered from Category 5 to 1 after making landfall in Mexico. But officials in Mexico and the U.S. aren't letting their guard down. This was the scene as Patricia, potentially the strongest hurricane ever recorded, made landfall on Mexico's Pacific coast. The monster storm could even be seen barreling into Mexico from space. Residents and tourists took shelter as fierce winds of up to 321 kilometers an hour lashed resorts such as Puerto Vallarta and Manzanillo. Around 90 people sought refuge at a Red Cross shelter to wait out the storm. Gale force winds whipped up huge waves by the coast. Trees were uprooted, signs toppled and there were reports of flash floods. A state of emergency has been declared in three states. Officials said that over 1,780 shelters had been set up across several cities and about 4,000 Mexican Navy officers have been dispatched to areas expected to bear the brunt of Patricia's wrath. Small fishing villages and mountainous regions are expected to be the worst affected with landslides and widespread flooding expected in the hurricane's wake. Although it weakened after making landfall in the area of Jalisco State, damage triggered by the Category 5 storm is expected to be devastating. Meanwhile, torrential downpours associated with Patricia are causing widespread flooding in the U.S. state of Texas. 
Large areas stretching from the Mexican border through San Antonio and into Dallas and Houston are waterlogged. The heavy rain is predicted to intensify over the weekend. We are indeed closely monitoring the storm and are in close communication with the government of Mexico. The State Department and USAID would be the lead agencies for any uh, international requests for assistance, so they'll be point um, if and when those requests come in. Patricia has been compared to Typhoon Haiyan, which killed more than 6,000 people in the Philippines in 2013. Two more women have come forward to accuse comedian Bill Cosby of sexual assault. But first, Republican presidential hopeful Donald Trump has called for candidates in the race to abandon their super PAC fundraisers. U.S. presidential hopeful Donald Trump has called on his rivals to disband their super PACs, political action committees which can raise unlimited sums of money from corporations. I disclaimed and disavowed all super PACs. I don't want any of them. I don't want their money. I don't want anything. And I said very strongly when we wrote the letter and I told my attorneys and everybody that I think every candidate running right now for the presidency should disavow their super PACs. Trump has complained repeatedly that super PACs give corporations too much influence over candidates and consequently presidents. On Friday, he said since he mostly self-funded his campaign, he won't bow to special interests. His campaign has asked all super PACs claiming to support him to stop raising money and return money to donors. Over in the Democratic Party race, Hillary Clinton is trying to distance herself from her old boss, President Barack Obama, and even her husband, former President Bill Clinton, by insisting she won't be like them. But when I look at what we have to do, I'm filled with excitement and optimism. I'm not running for President Obama's third term. I'm not running for Bill Clinton's third term. I'm running for my first term. The rally came a day after the former Secretary of State testified before lawmakers who insisted she handled the 2012 attack on the U.S. consulate in Libya and instructed staff to mislead the public about it. The hour after the hearing ended was the best fundraising hour of her campaign, according to a Clinton aide. Two more women have accused funny man Bill Cosby of sexual misconduct and the attorney says there are more women out there who are prepared to come forward. One of the women who identified herself only as Dottie said Cosby drugged and raped her when she visited him in a New York City apartment to audition for The Cosby Show in 1984. The other woman, Donna Barrett, said she was taking a photo with teammates following a track meet at the University of Pennsylvania in 2004 when Cosby grabbed her from behind and forcefully pressed her with his body. I cried out and tried to pull away from his vice-like grip on my waist. His, his other arm was holding my arm down against my side. He had me locked down against his body without my consent or desire. Cosby's lawyers declined to comment on the latest claims. More than 50 women have accused the veteran actor of sexual misconduct and assault dating back to the 1960s.